Good morning or, or good afternoon, everybody. Instagram, Richard underscore more underscore TI, Facebook, United States Anti Gang Stalking Association, YouTube, United States Anti Gang Stalking Association, Quora, US Anti Gang Stalking, and there's several other platforms but uh, <clears throat> so for the sake of time I won't go through that for those um, that uh, are, are learning and and getting help from what we're doing here I encourage you uh, to become a patreon at United States Anti-Gang Stalking Association and on Facebook we're also uh, currently in the middle of a GoFundMe drive. This is one way that you can support what we're doing and whether it's uh, five five dollars or five thousand dollars We may have some connection issues due to the nature of what I do. And moreover, due to the nature of the things that have unfolded in, here in Union County, uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, over the last three or four days, of me becoming aware of uh, some very disturbing things on top of some very disturbing things that I've already been aware of. So I thought it'd be prudent to uh, <clears throat> go through the fundamentals of what is gang stalking. Uh, many of you have no idea what it is. Many of you think you know what it is, and, um, and many of you know what it is. Now, this is by no means what I'm going to uh, read and go through as quickly as possible uh, and highlight uh, the handbook uh, step by step of the, the tactics of this illegal and very criminal program that's funded by taxpayer dollars. This isn't a new program. Congress banned the FBI's COINTELPRO program because it was an abject violation of civil and constitutional rights. It was simply rebranded. And this is a government a publication from 1994. This is pre-9-11, by the way. The National Institute of Justice, the United States Conference of Mayors. On the front lines, a directory of community policing in America's cities, January 1994. It's a very real program. This publication in itself staggers the imagination of how uh, good intentions have gone to hell in a handbasket. And as a casualty of this is countless hundreds and thousands of American citizens this program not only has affected the United States, but it's a global systemic epidemic of corruption of biblical proportions. Targeted individual quote, and I'm reading from this, the goal is to create a nationwide system of vigilantes 
who do not think of themselves but follow orders. They don't, they don't think that themselves. They just follow orders. It's just mindless uh, narrow, or narrow-minded morons. The evil doing, U.S. government paid defense contractors, private army of shooters, not thinkers. The network is run by contractors in DHS, Department of Homeland Security, which, by the way, is not a federal nor is it a state agency. They go on their website. It is a uh, owned Department of Homeland Security. Here in Mississippi, California, New York, Florida, no matter where you are, Arizona. It's owned by state employees and private entities. That's a broad brush, folks. Department of Homeland Security's 78 fusion centers. The propaganda is that they are fighting terrorists. And that's what they tell the vigilante suckers. These crash dummies. The truth is, the truth is they're constructing a nationwide GPS cell phone directed prison system that now contains all Americans. Not some, but all Americans. <clears throat> I, I suggest reading former Army Intelligence Officer Gillian McKinney's article, Microwave Harassment and Mind Control. Experimentation, 1994, also known the, as the McKinney Report. McKinney has been targeted individual herself for many decades and understands the larger system as well as anyone. The presentation below, organized gang stalking, what you need to know also occurs as YouTube pres presentations online under the same name. Many low-level perpetrators, of course, follow scripts given to them by their handlers or superiors. Thus, they are literally bad actors. Eventually, due to the generally lousy quality of acting, low-level street perps, I believe many TIs will begin to distinguish between perps from non-perps. They will learn to recognize setups and will find ways to either document and or foil types of overt operations described in the following article. Organized gang stalking, also known as gang stalking, Call stalking, organized vigilante stalking, stalking by proxy, community-based harassment, covert war, are essentially harassment and discrediting campaigns waged against a targeted individual. And now, I, I want to stop there for a second and say, well, who are targeted and why do they do it? There is no solid, clear, and good answer to that. Like the clothes you wear, you may be. You may have uh, been a whistleblower. You may have made a complaint against the wrong person. You may be using illegal drugs. Uh, you may have made your neighbor mad. You might have cut somebody off in traffic. It's a very low bar. Okay. It takes names to, on the list. It takes numbers to bilk the taxpayer till for hundreds and millions of dollars, fraudulently, to support this program. Citizens and neighbors are recruited to participate, often from extremist groups and cults, including fake churches, but also from among employees. Coordinated psychological warfare attacks consisting of stalkings, noise campaigns, Sensitizing and spreading of lies and rumors are executed in an effort to virtually neutralize and destroy the victim. Using people from all backgrounds and vocations to harass, track 24-7. Sometimes, organized lethal vehicle accidents, poisonings, electronic harassment, home invasion, property destruction, corrupt or ignorant doctor diagnosis given to stamp the victim as bogus, mentally ill, with delusions, paranoid, or schizophrenia, etc. Everything is done covertly and with a sophisticated real-time dispatching system to organize the criminal's harassment and attacks, often 
in the hundreds to the thousands of criminals participating as a coordinated mob at any given time while the criminal criminals do their normal routines of work, shopping, commuting, to and from work, leisure, etc., using the method of moving foot and vehicle surveillance techniques and computers, cell phones, verbal and visual cues, and every other conceivable type of communication. Often, the local net network of mob is connected to a national, international network. When the target travels, the local network will follow the target to the next city or town. When the target arrives there, the networking, that, lo that location will stalk follow and harass the target in that city or town. Organized gang stalking, also known as organized stalking, community harassment, community stalking, is a systematic form of control which seeks to destroy every aspect of a target individual's life. Using occupational health and safety laws, warning markers can be added to a target's file. Once a target is flagged, a notification is sent out and the target is followed around. 24 hours, 7 days a week, by the various communities that they're in. A covert investigation might be opened. An electronic means used by civilian spies as part of the covert monitoring or surveillance process. The citizen informants can be parts of these community-oriented programs, but are often just average citizens. Everyone in the target's life, let me repeat this, listen real close, Everyone in the target's life is contacted. Advise as to why the individual has been listed or flagged. Advise not to discuss the notification and ask to be a part of the ongoing, never-ending monitor systemic harassment process. The process is covertly designed to destroy the target over time leaving them with no form of support. Since most civil workers are aware of the notification system, it means that targets reporting incidents of being followed around by various strangers should not have been unfamiliar to the police and other agencies that targets reported their harassment to. In most cities, this notification is well known and is used by many workers and employees. Yet targeted individuals have had to have mental health evaluations <clears throat> for making complaints about this structure and the harassment that comes with it. Organized gang stalking is experienced by the targeted individual as psychological attack that is capable of immobilizing and destroying them over time. That's the end goal. The covert methods used to harass, persecute, and falsely defame the targets often leave no evidence of, to incriminate the civilian spies. It's similar to workplace mobbing, but takes place outside in the community. It's called organized gang stalking because groups or community members stalk and monitor the targets 24-7. Does the word gang, as in gang stalking, refer to street gangs? No. The word gang refers to multiple people who organize, group together for a common purpose. Keep the RICO Act in mind on that thought. What's the difference between stalking by a single perpetrator and organized gang stalking. All forms of stalking are physically, emotionally, and psychologically harmful to the victim. With regards to gang stalking, the abuse is, is particularly invasive as the victim is not able to distinguish friend from foe. The majority of the population is aware of cases such as jilted lover as a stalker and can readily identify key features of such abuse. The little-known phenomenon of organized gang stalking allows the perpetrator's anonymity and enables future victimizations uh, as the stalkers are actually encouraged by the lack of repercussions. That's why we're here. There will be repercussions. Please keep in mind that victims of organized gang stalking have to deal with an abuse engineered to make them appear insane. 
should they complain to authorities. It's no wonder that the victims of organized gang stalking are far more likely to commit suicide than victims of individual stalkers. Is organized gang stalking illegal? Yes. Despite what the leaders or members of stalking and harassment groups say or believe, all forms of stalking and harassment are illegal. Stalking can be defined as a pattern of repeated and unwanted attention, harassment, contact, or any other course of conduct directed at a specific person that would cause a reasonable person to feel fear. Stalking is against the law in every state. Stalking across state lines or in federal territories is illegal under federal law. A willful course of conduct involving repeated or continuing harassment of another individual that will cause a reasonable person to feel terrorized, frightened, intimidated, threatened, harassed, or molested, and that actually causes the victim to feel terrorized, frightened, intimidated, intimidated, threatened, harassed, or molested, a person who intentionally and repeatedly follows or harasses another person and who makes a credible threat, either expressed or implied, with the intent to place that person in reasonable fear of death or serious bodily harm is guilty of the crime of stalking. And we intend to continue to pursue and name these criminals. Harassment means conduct directed toward a victim that includes, but is not limited to, repeated or continued unconsented contact that would cause a reasonable individual to suffer emotional distress and that actually causes the victim to suffer emotional distress. FBI title 18 U.S. That's not their code, but uh, it's a, the United States title 18 U.S.C. section 241 conspiracy against rights. The statute makes it unlawful for two or more persons to conspire to injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate any person of any state, territory, or district in free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege secured to him or her by the Constitution or the laws of the United States, or because his or hers having exercised the same. The further makes it unlawful for two or more persons to go in disguise on the highway or in the premises of another with the intent to prevent or hinder his or her free exercise or enjoyment of any rights so secured. Excuse me while we've uh, absolutely got um, this interference of the home office absolutely does not want um uh, is interfering with a uh, connection here. And this is another uh, prime example of what um, uh, this community stalking is all about. And I'm going to try to get those folks uh, on YouTube back up and running. You'll bear with me a second. This is uh, par for the course, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to uh, Department of Homeland Security and the FBI, they absolutely want to do everything possible to interfere with what I'm doing right now. And um, so they continue to monkey with uh, my connections and many of you that are targeted individuals are well aware of what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm waiting for uh, YouTube to um, uh, make its connection. So, so we're back back on YouTube. Don't know how long they're going to let that happen. Um, punishment varies from a fine or imprisonment of up to 10 years or both. And if death results, or if, or if such acts include kidnapping or an attempt to kidnap, 
aggravated sexual abuse or an attempt to commit aggravated sexual abuse or attempt to kill shall be fined under this title or in prison any term of years for life or may be sentenced to death. I hope you stalkers are hearing this. The express goal of organized gang stalking is to silence a victim. Like tampering with my uh, my Wi-Fi and my internet connection. Alpine Volunteer Fire Department and you surrounding perps and corrupt law enforcement with stingrays might want to sit, that, sit your ass down for a minute because I will stay on here until the cows come home. I'm going to get this message out. So we... we See who has uh, the most um, resilience here, okay? I'm not going to stop, nor am I going to shut up. And and, and so it's, I'm in federal court right now, two cases that name the sheriff of Union County, Mississippi, Jimmy Edwards, and an additional federal lawsuit in federal court right now that named none other than Jim H. Johnson, the sheriff of Lee County, Mississippi. This is just the beginning. I've also named private citizen crash dummy stalkers and have amended as recently as yesterday. And we have named other private contractor state actors that are involved in this program and crimes committed against myself in federal court. So that's why I get interference with what I'm doing here. The express goal of organized gang stalking is to silence the victim, drive the victim insane and possibly to the point of suicide, or destroy the victim's reputation and believability, as the person will likely be viewed as mentally ill, should, should they complain or report the abuse. To cause the target to appear mentally unstable is one, and this is achieved through a careful, carefully detailed assault using advanced psychological harassment techniques and a variety of other tactics that are the usual protocol for gang stalking, such as street theater, mobbing, pervasive, petty, disrespecting, organized gang stalking is also used to gather information on individuals, as well as force individuals to move or leave an area. Good luck with that, Union County. When the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation said, well, have you considered moving? I said, that's like asking a young lady. Has she considered wearing a longer dress? Maybe she wouldn't get raped as often. I said, no, I hadn't considered moving. Have you considered doing your job, MBI, Troop F, New Albany, Mississippi? Have you, have you thought about that? Have you thought about that? Jessica Stacks has been missing for nine months. We've got the sheriff using vile, vulgar language to the mother about how the FBI wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Tyrants. I'm talking about tyrants, folks, and towering into the highest order. Due to the stalkers ever... <laughs> do the stalkers ever question or check to see if a targeted victim is indeed guilty of a crime? Ooh, that burns me up, just the, the thought of that. As if it's They're not part of the due process system. Anyway, I'll, I'll go on. No, there is an assumption of guilt among the stalkers because they're the ones committing the crimes. Of course, you're pointing one finger. There's three more point back at you. Also, remember that many stalkers are paid for their harassment. So these individuals are not concerned with the innocence or guilt of a victim. Assuming a victim knows the group that is behind their stalking, should they attempt to openly communicate with them? Absolutely not. For one, the stalkers automatically assume the victim is guilty of an atrocity and thus deserves the treatment. Second, many stalkers actually want the victim to engage them in some fashion. In these instances, the interaction will be recorded and used as evidence against the victim, especially in attempts to suggest the victim is mentally unstable. If a charitable and respectable society participates organized gang stalking on the side, sh should we assume the victims deserve such treatment? Absolutely not. When people take the law into their own hands, any notion of law is destroyed altogether. I should emphasize 
that the majority of organized gang stalking victims are completely innocent of any crimes. Any group that performs organized gang stalking is not positive in nature nor beneficial to society, despite any charitable works they may perform, fake churches. Likewise, such societies only remain respectable because any and all evidence of wrongdoing is conveniently destroyed or eliminated. All right, there, Sheriff. Motivation for organized gang stalking varies. Revenge for a real or imagined offense. True or false accusations of a horrible crime of which the victim has gotten away with. Silencing a corporate whistleblower. Defecting from a cult. A perceived enemy of a group or organization and knowing too much are examples of possible motivations. Due consideration should be used as the motivations of the stalking and harassment groups are in no way limited to what I just said. The stalkers, for the most part, are everyday citizens. Other stalkers are street thugs who've been recruited or hired to harass and intimidate. Some stalkers actually are actually private investigators. Oh, how we know that. Who have been hired to gather information concerning the victim. Many stalkers are members of volunteer police groups. That's volunteer fire departments. That's um, elected sheriffs, their deputies, the police chief in every city. They run this program. Who or what is ultimately behind gang stalking? Corporations. What corporations? Well, that's a broad brush. Where are we going to start? Google, Amazon, all the way down to Walmart, UPS, FedEx. It takes a village of idiots to run this program. It's the holistic approach to community policing, which means everyone playing their part. Corporations, government organizations, military, Mississippi National Guard, National Guard in every state, the police, corrupt cops, societies, fraternities, orders, Eastern Star Masons, cults, Mormons, and destroyers. Destructive New Age groups, concerned community groups, what's a broad brush, vigilante groups, criminal organizations, sex, drug trafficking, human trafficking, murder for hire, etc., volunteer police organizations, goes on and on. Here's some examples of how they harass. Slash tires. Threatening phone calls, verbal assaults by strangers, property damage, death threats, following on foot or by vehicle, bizarre notes and drawings left, loitering, anonymous false accusations to friends. Imagine that. Boy, I tell you. And you got fake churches that, uh, that are absolutely making this stuff happen. False accusation from friends, family, and neighbors, character assassinations, smear campaigns, blacklisting, psychological abuse, etc. Tactics and methods used by those organized gang stalking and harassment groups. The following techniques are several types, not all, they're often used against targeted individuals. There are other techniques used. That here's just some primary ones. One, anchoring. Anchoring is a technique employed by the stalkers to implant false motivation or reason behind the stalking, preventing the victim from discovering the truth. In more sinister examples, anchoring involves the implantation of evidence to persuade the victim some other group or organization is responsible for the abuse. I wish you didn't hear that. And just look up anchoring at Wikipedia. 
In organized gang stalking, anchoring is used to make the target have fear with things happening in your daily life. That's considered to be normal. That can be done with frequent demonstrations. The key is the frequency, just like other organized gang stalking methods. For example, people show you a pen everywhere you go, and their attitude is rude or crazy against you. You don't know them. You just wonder what's going on. Imagine that happens every day for a week, for a month, for a year, and then that makes you have fear with a pen. In this case, a pen is anchored with your state of fear. Explain anchoring. It could be anything, an open car door or trunk, a pencil, a cell phone, notebook computer, a medical mask, clothes of the same color, anything. Every time I go somewhere during the day, an anchoring thread is made by a car or a truck with doors or a trunk open and no one in it sitting in someone else's driveway along my route. This is a sign to get out. Good luck with that, perverts. Air, air stalking. This is when helicopters or planes are used to track targets. They are on foot or in cars. They fly overhead and follow the targets from one location to the next. Some will monitor the target shortly after they leave their home. <clears throat> but when you say, I'm being followed by a helicopter, oh, well, you're, you're on drugs. You're tripping. You need to go see, you need to be on medication. Uh, I don't hear that. I've heard those things. But people are, uh, uh, let's just put it this way. Those that know me now uh, know that's a real bad idea uh, to gaslight and insinuate that it's anything other than what I just said. And when they don't find it as disturbing and as appalling as I do, then they absolutely are suspect number one. Something wrong with a person that's not, that doesn't find being stalked by any type of aircraft, including a drone, unsettling at best. Baiting and entrapment. The term baiting is a stalking tactic used to lure a victim into environments or situations which cause further problems to the victim. Often baiting involves tricking a victim into committing a crime or unknowingly engaging in an illegal activity to lure into dangerous, difficult, or compromising situations. Members of these organized stalking and harassment groups will try to lure targets into various situations for the sole purpose of setting them up. Guntown, Mississippi. Set up targets could involve getting them arrested, institutionalized, set up on fake sexual harassment charges, drug charges, illegal pornographic materials, Amory at Mississippi, Monroe County, Mississippi. Once this happens, it puts the targets at risk for entrapment into becoming members themselves. This is how they get uh, if you meet someone or hear someone say, well, that, that happened to me. That was happening to me for two or three years, you know, and this is what I did, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is not, uh, this is way more complicated than a uh, sexual reorientation surgery program. Once you become a target of stalking, you will die a target or you will die a stalker. Ain't no third one. Ain't no in between, sweetheart. It used to happen. It doesn't anymore. Well, then you're stalking. It's that simple. You're a stalker. Period. 
Uh, that's all I've got to say about that. Braiding. I hear a lot of people, what's the deal with that? I don't know if they're just people that's trolling or fishing or just uh, trying to gaslight, who knows. Braiding is shining or flashing bright headlights on the targets. As targets walk on the street, usually at night, members of these organized gang stalking uh, will turn on their high beams. Imagine that. This might be flashed once or twice at the targets. This might be used to let targets know they're being watched. However, these signals may also be a way for informants in cars at night to communicate with their fellow counterparts. The foot patrols will then communicate back to the informant in the car using a combination of hand signals. You will see members of these groups riding around during the day with their headlights on or high beams on. The victim is usually followed and may be flashed from either a from a tailgating vehicle or a passing or oncoming one. Brighting also occurs when the bright lights are flashed into a victim's home windows. I've got hundreds of hours of footage of everything that I've just mentioned on the interstate, across state lines, in my home, in Phoenix, Arizona which is the, uh, um, I have a studio there as well, and um, it doesn't change. Car accidents. When I, when I'm, as I go through these things, folks, you're looking at and talking and li listening to an individual that has not only experienced this, but has documented this and has lived through it. Targeted individuals complain about being cut off driven off the road and near fatal or fatal or fatal car accidents. Pedestrian targets complain about cars that are consistently cut them off, being hit by cars and almost near mishaps. <sighs> Crowding mobbing. When the target is in public, members of these organized gang stalking groups will usually try to box the target in. They will surround the target in a square-like formation if possible. They will stand too close to the target or swarm them. Quote, we experience being mobbed by vehicles from Connecticut to New York and New Jersey. And at the beginning of our trip, some of the gang stalkers were couples with their children alone. Documented this, folks. They teach their children just like Hitler's youth. Some smirked at us and showed weapons right here. A firearm was brandished. Dr. Stanwick made a complaint. The sheriff of Union County, Mississippi, in that department, has done nothing. Why? Sheriff's deputies were on site and death threats being made to myself and Dr. Stanley. Once again, the Union County Sheriff's Department stonewalled on even providing the name of the adults they were speaking with out there and or taking the, the complaint. They refused several attempts at a FOIA request filed with them, the county attorney, for the names of those individuals. We struggled even getting the names out of the officers. But they did make a bold statement and said, one of them said, I am community policing. We'll be seeing you in court. They smirked and they showed weapons to us through their windows, though none actually fired upon us. I wish I could say that, but I've had that happen. My rear window being shot out in broad daylight as I'm driving. On Highway 9 North, broad daylight. Chris Chappell, investigator of Union County, said that was a misdemeanor. Really? Hmm. Had I done that, the table's been turned. Had it been by other than one of their coward, pervert, stalking, snitch rats that, that work for them, it's a felony. Ah, it's a misdemeanor.
No big deal. Hmm. We're going to see about that. Color harassment is literally the use of color to harass victims. To a victim. Usually, monochromatic color schemes are used, though this choice is pretty much up to the stalkers. An example of color harassment would be a line of stalkers in red shirts. Circling a victim. Color harassment is often combined with other stalking tactics. Convoy. Convoy is a tactic of stalkers, referring to the practice of group of tailgating, car passing repeatedly in front of the home of the victim. Vehicles used may be of the same color, and the stalkers may honk the horn or flash the car headlights as they pass or scream and shout profanities as they do. Here in Union County, that I have just re, uh, just got posted countless of them, and re, re, countless uh, uh, numbers of uh, videos of that very thing happening right here. Cyber stalking, cyber stalking, or cyber harassment is related is a related group of harassing behavior occurring via internet and online. Cyber stalking includes, but not limited to, computer hacking. <clears throat> trolling, spamming, often including porn, verbal assaults, character assassinations, and impersonations of the victim. I'm going to keep reading. Online harassment is a plank of the harassment protocol. A plank. If you have a website devoted to organized stalking, you may, you may have people emailing you to flame you or claiming that they are victims and asking for support with the intention of discrediting you. You may receive unsolicited emails that parallels a current event in your life. You'll see it in your Facebook news feed. There'll be something going on and all of a sudden everybody in the news feed is talking about it. Again, surveillance is used primarily for harassment. Or you may receive covert insults and threats. If you join a support group, you may also receive harassment via threads posted on message boards, like other mediums or of harassment. The topics of these threads may be about events that are unfolding in your personal life, as well as threats or insults covertly directed at you. This will probably happen repeatedly by the same person or people. They may also employ some gaslighting or jacketing tactics. Jacketing was often used during Cointel Pro to make genuine activists look like informants. Some internet groups which help stalking victims are heavily populated with perpetrators posing as victims. Some of these perpetrators seem to be very vocal and popular members of these support groups. And sometimes it's the whole group, including the founders, think targeted justice. Directed conversations. Directed conversation is a term referring to a stalking tactic using strangers' conversations to both intimidate and to convey to the victim that they are under surveillance. During directed conversations, two or more stalkers will approach near to the target and engage in normal conversation with one with one another. The conversation is purposefully made at a level so that the victim can adequately hear what is being said. Directed conversation, personal information concerning the victim is inserted into the speech and emphasized by the stalkers in a fashion that most non-victims would not be able to discern as harassment. The purpose of directed conversations is to harass the victim as well as to make the victim appear mentally unstable should they attempt to complain about such abuse. There are conversations that, the, that complete strangers will have out in public related to the target and their personal situations. For example, they will repeat things a target said in their home or on their phone. They will drop very personal details into the conversation. They can only be related to the target. For example, member one, it's a shame Uncle Ed won't be able to come. Member two, yeah, since he died golfing on Saturday. 
The target will just have ha have learned of the death of a favored uncle, possibly named Ed, while out golfing. No such thing as a coincidence, folks. Electronic harassment. Electronic harassment is used is the use of technological devices to spy on or cause harm to targeted victims. For example, exposure to high magnetic field has been shown to induce hallucination in humans, while exposure to intense microwave radiation induces psychotic episodes and causes brain damage. A frequent form of electronic harassment involves beaming a low-frequency hum or tone into the victim's home or general area. Over time, the exposure causes the victim to lose sleep, become agitated, and suffer the effects of prolonged stress. Such tactics are also being used in cases of hostage situations as well as covert government operations. Frequencies can destroy electronic equipment. Electronic frequencies can be used to, for monitoring and tracking inside the home. And at work, it can also be used for the purpose of sleep disturbance. When those conducting these covert, covert investigations feel that they have psychologically destroyed the target to where they are near breakdown, they will start to use these weapons. Oh, how I know. They will also use these weapons if targets are not going along with their harassment protocol. While interviewing Kathy's story in regards to her missing daughter, Jessica Stacks. I recorded with a trifield meter, and we saw unexplained, but are explained, phenomenon happen in real time during this interview of a very malicious harassment attack with microwave frequencies that is recorded and documented. This is real. It's very evil. It's very sinister. And it's law enforcement that make all this possible. Yes, ma'am. Electronic uh, harassment, you can Wikipedia that. Uh, fake credibility reports. Fake credibility reports. Fake credibility are, are being used to subtly discredit and attack legitimate websites regarding organized gang stalking, including the Gang Stalking World website under the guise of doing good for the community. It's gangstalkingworld.com. It's been indicated that targets will have warning markers placed against their files. The information is then shared with relatives, storekeepers, friends, and the community at large. The files are usually not left behind, but they are used to prejudice and slander individuals against the target. These files can be used to engender the cooperation of friends, the cooperation of friends and associates of the targets. The files might have a picture of the target and information of some alleged crime incident that the target has been flagged for or is under investigation for. The information is usually very convincing and helps to further get targets harassed by those around them. Gaslighting. Gaslighting is a psychological technique used by members of these groups. The purpose of gaslighting is to make the victim question his or her sanity, doing little things to try to make the target think they are going crazy. Gaslighting simply is trying to convince someone that they are crazy or imagining things. Example, if you mention organized gang stalking to someone who knows about it and they tell you you're crazy or paranoid, they are gaslighting you. The term gaslighting originates from the 1944 film Gaslight. In the movie, the character of Gregory Anton, played by Charles Boyer, attempts to drive the character Pauline, played by actress Ingrid Bergman, insane. The phrase gaslighting has come to mean similar actions and behavior as used in the film against a victim. 1944 Gaslight, starting, starring Ingrid Bergman, and you can go to Wikipedia on that as well. Ghosting. The term ghosting refers to the practice of rearranging or moving of a victim's home furniture, 
lawn decorations, desk decorations at work. The purpose of ghosting is to make a victim question his or her sanity. Ghosting is also designed to make others question the sanity of the victim, especially if the victim attempts to complain of the abuse. Gestures. Ooh, I don't, folks, listen. <laughs> hand gestures, such as intentionally touching hand to the face or bringing the fist or hand to the face while around person being targeted. Arm gesture members of these organized stalking and harassment groups repeatedly driving by a person being targeted of their home, holding their arms at the vehicle window, usually in an unnatural position. I've got so much footage of that. It is known, it's a known fact, these individuals are involved in organized gang stalking and technological harassment are also involved in illegal criminal racketeering operations with use of remote neural monitoring where these criminals, individuals, are profiting off individuals involving masturbation. In some cases, these arm gestures are being done to the victims as a degenerate NLP, sublineal sexual symbolic masturbation trigger. We already know that individuals involved in this crime and cults are obsessed with symbols and numbers. Individuals who are victims of organized gang stalking, technological harassment, and human trafficking and racketeering are being daily subjected to these intentional bizarre harassment arm gestures being used as a sublineal persuasion sexual gesture by these degenerate, deranged cult members who are if not directly involved in human trafficking operations, are being used as cheerleaders for those involved in or operating human trafficking and racketeering operations by use of remote neural monitoring satellite technology. Thank you, Union County, Mississippi. Law enforcement, once again, and local frontline pervert crash dummy stalkers. And this is across the board nationwide. I'm speaking for everybody, folks. Note, arm harassment gestures used by these organized criminal groups to harass targets or victims does not have anything to do with abusing or domestic violence. This is the excuse and pretext that these criminals are using in an attempt to justify and harassing other individuals for years at a time. These bizarre arm Harassment gestures are only a small portion of the criminal harassment tactic that is used as a part of a large syndicated crime of organized gang stalkers. It's also important to note these individuals are claiming that it is the police that arm harassment gestures. Doing the, it's the police doing it. If the arm harassment gestures are being done by the police, then it is corrupt syndicated police officers. Hello? taking advantage of his position of authority and using it to harass other citizens while giving his fellow officers and department a bad negative image. He's greenlighting this behavior. To our knowledge, these armed harassment gestures are not taught at local police academy, but we could be wrong about that. Uh, I'm not completely certain it's not taught. As a matter of fact, that they're teaching it somewhere because I've witnessed them in patrol cars doing and participating in the things I have already mentioned thus far. I could name, and do the cows come home, of the, the already documented law enforcement that are involved, and I have watched and recorded them doing this, but shortly, as New Albany Police Department, New Albany, Mississippi, Union County Sheriff's Department, Lee County Sheriff's Department, and Tupelo, Mississippi Police Department, uh, and yesterday, or day before yesterday, when I went to meet an individual to speak about the murder of his grandparents that I have personal knowledge of, that law enforcement won't ignore, uh, that, and, and somehow want to discredit it, but now we're, they're putting two and two together. I'm being stopped by police departments completely out of their jurisdiction. 
and diff from different cities and different counties, all in the area where I was. They were making them, themselves known uh, with an attempt to threaten, intimidate, and harass me. And so I want to let the local, and state, and federal law enforcement know this. And and if you if you don't already know, you're gonna know it now. Nothing about you and what you do is gonna intimidate, stop this old boy from doing what I'm doing. Okay. I don't care if it's one or ten thousand police cars. You're not gonna stop me. You're not gonna stop the truth. Okay. Nice try. Get down on somebody else. I, you're the wrong. I'm the wrong person for that. Those cars you're driving and your paycheck, I'm the one. It's me. It's the citizen. That's who you work for. So get that straight. Okay? You assholes under the color of law that think you're running something, you work for us. Okay? And we're going to hold you accountable for these crimes that you're greenlighting, endorsing, and absolutely organizing against citizens in broad daylight. Illegal surveillance. These individuals setting up audio and some visual surveillance of the target, bugging the target's phone, surveillance in the target's residence, listening to cell phone and hardline conversations, hacking into their computers, and learning all about the target is doing, sites they frequent, or planning things. This also helps to build a profile of the target, and it's also used to later for later psychological attacks against the target via, via parroting and directed conversations. Examples of illegal surveillance is illegal uh, criminal electronic monitoring, illegal criminal phone and computer taps, illegal criminal remote neural monitoring. Mimicry and mirroring is a specialized form of harassment in which stalkers publicly imitate every movement made by the victim. This is trying to copy things in a target's life, leaving leaving when they do, dressing like they dress, throwing out garbage, going to the bathroom, doing whatever the target's doing. This is all designed to be psychological warfare so that the target, again, feels like they're under observation at all times. Mobbing is a term that is described group bullying of itself. Mobbing is not equated with gang stalking. However... We uh, have had, uh, again, uh, we've had someone to uh, jump on uh, uh, on YouTube and 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 jack the connection, and so, like I said, uh, for you. Uh, Perverted stalkers in Union County, Mississippi. We can do this all day long. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to throw my hands up. You're not going to get me frustrated where I just give up and quit or anything else. That's not going to happen. So we're not going to do it like that. We're going to do it my way, whether you like it or not. So that's, uh, that's the deal. I, the, the, um, uh, the very things that, that I'm talking about, folks, you can rest assured about the, the computer hacking and so forth. This is exactly what I'm going through right now with my service and computer. And so we got I've got other devices recording it. And so they're, they're on, on this thing, trying to do everything they can to, to circumvent what I'm doing. But uh, it, it, it's going to be there whether they want it to be there or not. Mobbing may be a tactic used by perpetrators of gang stalking. Uh, it's really not um, equated with that. Go to Wikipedia on mobbing. A noise harassment campaign. A noise harassment campaign is an orchestrated effort to produce stress and a victim through prolonged exposure to significant noise levels. A noise campaign can range from multiple neighbors routinely playing loud music, individual stalkers with air horns or fireworks, organized repair work that all involves high level of noise right here in, uh, in Brett Alpine. This will include anything from loud vehicles, loud mufflers, 
door slamming above or you or below you, garbage disposal, slamming doors, hammering intensely, slamming car doors, loud, loudly, loud stereo, stomping at specific times if you're in apartments or something, loud coughing, pot slamming, water running, cupboard doors being slammed, fridge motor running all night, power tools, etc. Okay, some of those things are, are indicative would be when you have close proximity to other people. Uh, all these other things, yes. And I, I've recorded these people. I know who they are. I know, I know their names. And they think what they're doing is is perfectly legal. As as these court cases uh, unfold, these morons are going to see it's everything but legal. Okay? Number harassment. Number harassment is literally the use of numbers to harass a target or victim. This can include the brainwashed members of these cults driving by victims' home at a certain time, exciting or entering the neighbor, exiting or entering the neighborhood at certain times, etc., or performing a harassment task or skit at a certain time of the day or night for the purpose of harassment of the target or uh, victim. There, the number of harassment may be done in synchronicity with other members of these cults. For example, a member of the cults arrives. At 7.07 in the afternoon, another member of the cult leaves at 7.07 at the same time. The next morning, the same members of the cult leave the home at 7.07, followed by another member of the cult. The individuals that belong to these cults are using local police 10 ham radio codes to harass and to convey harassment-related themes to an individual being targeted for years at a time. The only logical explanation that can be drawn as to why these brainwashed cult members are using local police 10 codes to harass other citizens is that they have been deluded into thinking that they are somehow police. Yes. <laughs> they, they believe they are the police. Okay. It's questionable whether they can spell police, but they believe that. I, I hope uh, YouTube, my YouTube connection gets cut off again because every time that happens, yeah, I, I get agitated. But rem keep in mind, perps, that's what motivates me to put more people on blast. It's, it's not as if I, I don't have it, but we're, we're going we're gonna to start talking about it, okay? So I'm, you're going to get your money's worth today. Screw them with me. The idea behind the number harassment is to get the individual being targeted sensitized to certain numbers so that they can be constantly harassed by use of these numbers. Most importantly, the members of these cults have already been sensitized, conditioned, and brainwashed to these specific numbers and are consistently looking to their watches and clocks to see what time it is. In the case, they have a harassment skit or order to perform a specific time of the day or night. This has been passed to them by the criminal leader an organizer via a cell phone text. That's correct. The cult members are actually being given harassment tasks and street theater scripts to perform at a certain time of the day for the purpose of harassment of another individual, despite the fact that the individuals being targeted can easily document this harassment and cult behavior using a video camera with a date and timestamp and sue the individuals for damages of harassment and emotional distress, which is what's happening right now as I speak. I'm currently working on a, a brand new, and it includes uh, several property owners in this area around me. And uh, win, lose, or draw, friends. They're going to spend a war pension fighting me. I'm going to make them pay. So, not to steal this from Fram Oil Filters, you can pay me now or pay me later. But I can tell you one thing, you will pay. You will pay. And as they continue to screw with my uh, connection on YouTube, let me continue with this. Sensitation. Sensitation is a psychological term referring to the focused association between a stimuli and a corresponding reaction. Members of these groups use sensitization to psychological abuse of victim. For example, if a stalker constantly harasses a victim 
while wearing a blue baseball cap. Then over time, the victim will begin to believe anyone wearing a blue baseball cap is a stalker and is coming to harass. Sensitation is getting targets sensitive to an everyday stimuli, including colors, patterns, everyday actions. Example, red, stripes, pins, whistles, loud coughing, clapping, waves, keys jingling. Example, Joe will be mobbed at work. And as part of that daily mobbing, his co-workers will loudly cough at him every time they harass him by calling him names like loser, worthless, lame, demented. They will slander him and how others, as they are slandering him, show disgust by glaring and coughing at him. Out in public, they will follow him loudly and obnoxiously coughing at him. When he goes to stores, they will get others to do the, <laughs> to, to do the same. For months or years of this, Joe has become sensitive to the stimuli and it can be used to harass him without the names and the glaring looks. The association has been formed because all the other harassment. For instance, a girl is sexually assaulted and a sock is shoved in her mouth during the assault to keep her quiet or to stop her from pressing charges. The assailant, his friends and family will follow her around and throw socks in her path. Mention it everywhere she goes and show her their socks every chance they get. She will get the message that they are sending. Because of the brutal attack, she and, wants, she and what's happening after she is now sensitized. Sensitization undoubtedly creates an extreme level of fear and a victim in direct fulfillment of the intentions of the stalker's sensitization. You can research sensitization on Wikipedia. <clears throat> Folks, this is, um, if this is not appalling, this is what the sheriff and the FBI, the local police department, including members of the, this uh, emergency management association and this clown ass chief of Alpine Volunteer Fire Department, this is kind of stuff that they're down with against American citizens. This is absolutely the deplorable, pathetic behavior from tyrants of the highest order. Street theater is a term used to describe the odd actions and behaviors that stalkers sometimes <laughs> neighbors do in public in an attempt to rile their victim. Such behavior often borders on extremely bizarre and is aimed at blurring of the boundaries between reality and fantasy in the minds of the victim. This is running into people that are acting very unusual or people that are putting on a show or a production known as street theater. This could be a minor as a public uh, rudeness or people acting out a harassment skit. There will usually be someone nearby to see how you react to it. This is, again, looking for weakness and reactions. If you show an adverse reaction, they will try to embellish on this and use it against you later. Street theater is harassment skits done by strangers and neighbors who have been recruited into these street and harassment groups. Examples of street theater, baiting, briding, color harassment, convoys, directed conversation, ghosting, mimicry, noise campaign, etc., Synchronized harassment activities refer to the synchronized activities done by members of these groups to harass a target, which may include, but not limited, to neighbors arriving at home at the same time or leaving home at the same time or strangers leaving or arriving at home at the same time. For instance, a neighbor leaves his or her house at the same time the other neighbor arrives. A neighbor arrives home at the same exact time. A complete stranger or pedestrian walks by the target's house. This is synchronized activity. It is one of the main techniques used in harassing a target and is repeated. Example, targets leave his or her home at the exact same time. A neighbor who has been recruited into the harassment levels, their home, followed by an airplane or helicopter flying overhead. This synchronized harassment will turn into a pattern and may include the use of numbers such as 
two neighbors are riding home at 3.13 and two neighbors leaves their home at 3.30. The same neighbors rise back at home at 3.43. Synchronized harassment activities can be done with almost anything. Neighbors arriving, exiting at the same time, aircraft flying overhead. As neighbors are leaving or arriving home, harassment, telephone calls to targets, just as neighbors who have been recruited into the harassment are leaving or arriving. The key to this timing, when I say, when I say, Harassment telephone calls made to the target just as neighbors who have been recruited into the harassment and are leaving their home. Now, when we watch the horrible video footage uh, of uh, the individual that was driving the semi-truck and trailer for a company supposedly named 3D Pied Straw, And the owner is uh, Gary Daniels, or I believe, hope on the name, name comes up. And he's, um, and he's talking about a lot of things. I, I watch, it's a disturbing video. It's still, it's still on Facebook. Many of you know about it, many of you don't. I'm not going to share it at this moment, but it is there. Uh, and he is, um, the police that he's referring to, he's talking about the New Albany and Union County law enforcement officials. While he is tempting, he's live streaming and, and telling everybody that he's getting ready to kill himself. His phone is ringing off the hook many times during very serious harassment campaigns on the interstate, I've experienced the very same thing. They hit you from all angles. What has not been said about this individual is the mobs of cars that were hitting him with microwave-directed energy weapons and the harassment to drive him to that point at that time I believe he was in Florida to open the door and jump out in front of two tractor trailers coming in the opposite direction to his death. It's been dismissed as my guy was out there on dope. That's uh, Sheriff Edwards' favorite go-to answer. MBN, that's their favorite go-to answer. Well, I'm telling you what, folks. As we talk about justice for Jessica um, and this stonewalling and these lies of these people that are missing, and I talk to these bereaved family members that have been dismissed and been told they were hindering investigations and been absolutely inundated by belligerent and dismissive law enforcement, tyranny, the highest order. There's other stories. There's other people. There are other deaths. They're neck deep in it. And we're going to keep talking about it. It's coming together. And it's coming out. And we're, going to get the, we're going to get the real story. We're going to get some answers. We're going to get some answers. The key to this is timing and frequency. The main motivation behind synchronized harassment activity is, again, that if the target complains about this type of harassment, he or she may perceive, be perceived as mentally ill. <sighs> Communication happened in a number of ways. Well, on the street or in cars patrolling, they use baseball or Stasi-like signals. These include things like tapping, Inside of their nose, corner of their eye, brushing back their hair three times, or the infamous double blink. Members of these organized stalking and harassment groups will also communicate with each other on the street by using signals. Blow the examples. Signals for observation. Watch out. Subject is coming. Touching the nose with a hand or handkerchief. Subject is moving or going further or over taking stroke hair with hand or raise 
hat briefly. Subject standing still. Lay hand against back or on stomach. Observing agent wishes to terminate observation because cover is threatened. Bend and retie shoelaces. Subject returning. Both hands against back or on stomach. Observing agent wishes to speak with team leader or other observing agents. Take out briefcase or equivalent and examine contents. Slander. They will go behind the target's back and tell lies about them. Often the lies will consist of the targets being into something illegal or someone dangerous or just needs to be watched for some vague reason. Then they will say the target is a prostitute, drug dealer. Crazy, terrorist, racist, pedophile, etc. Well, if that didn't make you hot, folks, I'm telling you, I'm hot. <clears throat> I'm hot. I'm hot. And I'm, I promise you, I got the court cases to prove it and the evidence to back it up. I tell how hot I am. And I ain't even got started good. Sleep deprivation. Noise harassment campaigns depriving the target of sleep is rarely a good way of leaving. Is a really good way of leaving the target stressed out. I tell you about long term sleep deprivation will ultimately, according uh, to Harvard and the National Institute of Health, and so forth and so on, will lead to death, okay? That in and of itself. It causes the systematic shutdown of your organs, and etc. It's also a way of leaving them disoriented and functioning at less than 100%. Then the targets can be baited into reacting in public or getting into a car accident. They want to exploit that vulnerability. When I travel, and the longer I drive and the longer I go, they, they're they aware of this. And they try to exploit that. And they, they double and triple and quadruple down their harassment to attempt to force error. For me to self-implode, to do something that will have me dead or in the hospital or in jail. It's a very dangerous game they're playing. Especially as it pertains to me. I try to do everything I can to dissuade their practices, and I will continue to do that. And you boys know that too, don't you? Okay? So exploit those vulnerabilities. Many people jump to their death, like the gentleman I just mentioned. And we mentioned the first sentence. You hear some of these hayseed podunks. While he was on drugs, what, what's that got to do? with what that person is saying. What has that got to do with that person's life and his family? And who in the hell are you to judge and point a finger as if that person did that to themselves or deserved it? Have you ever considered the possibility that someone drove them Flip the switch to make that happen. It was not a volunteer movement. Many, if most of these, are not operating on their free will. This is what I'm talking about, folks. It's long-term exposure to this. And getting control of the victim. This is very sinister. It's very evil. It's very real. Telephone redirects. When you make a telephone call, get get the name and ID of the person that you're speaking to. Covert investigations have redirected phone calls. This means that when you dial a number, they will intercept that phone call and pretend to be the service or repair person you were trying to call. <sighs> Dr. Samwick called and recorded and broadcast a long conversation with Mercedes-Benz customer service. The customer service person was being real nice and was saying, yes, sir, 
she corrected him. I am a lady. I'm not a man. And she does not have a man's voice. She corrected him. Yet, and then he continued with, yes, sir. She continued to correct him. Mercedes-Benz didn't do anything uh, about the complaint. You're driving a vehicle close to a $100,000 vehicle, and then you get redirected to some asshole playing games, and, and, and your whole life is caught up in these little glitches of they've purposely allowed entry and exit and, and given access to this vehicle. A Mercedes-Benz is responsible personally for her targeting. And personally, for my targeting, as it refers to mine as well. I'm not going to get on that, that today, but it's real. If you call the cable company, Cox Cable, Phoenix, Arizona, private contracting, Perps, Tom Bigby Electric, North Mississippi, certified card carrying. Perpetrators, crimes against humanity. Tom Bigby Electric Power Association. You best believe it. Gas or phone company. Be sure you know that's actually them that you're speaking to. How you'd ever do that. Also remember that the telephone companies and other business are often infiltrated by organized gang stalking harassment groups and can be used to harass and cause target individual problems. <laughs> Targets will daily get wrong number calls. These can be automated or they can be persons pretending to be wrong number calls. Members of these groups will use this as a means to monitor and psychologically harass the victim. I want you to know the target he is that I want to know the target is at all times. Variation of gang stalking, uh, uh, con consumer stalking. Consumer stalking is a harassment and abuse directed at a consumer who has either filed a complaint against a company, filed a lawsuit against a company, or has made aware of illegal activity occurring within a company. Often, companies will fund stalkers, what? Simply in an attempt to prevent the victim from filing a lawsuit. Hmm. Is that what's going on in Union County? I've got two against you, and you, you, you boys have not let up. Okay? Uh, uh, is it any wonder? Yes, yeah, hadn't already been drug into federal court, but I'm going to have you there, okay? But this is what they do. By using fear and intimidation tactics, consumer stalking can also be used to describe certain illegal activities for debt, debt collectors. Corporate stalking, the term corporate stalking refers to particularly, is particularly severe form of gang stalking, where a corporation actually provides funding mm, toward the harassment and abuse of a targeted individual, usually someone who is, is a whistleblower, a perceived problem employee, or else an employee who has witnessed illegal activity occurring within the corporation. The most sinister and downright evil tactic used during corporate stalking is forcing the victim to see the company psychologist. In most cases, the company psychologist is made aware that the victim uh, is a dissident and a threat that needs to be eliminated. A recommendation of institutionalization, corporate stalking. You can go to, um, uh, there's a site on corporate stalking, at firstmonday.org. And, uh, is it, and so that's all I'll say about that. Intimidate and filtration. This is where members of these groups will go out of their way to get, get into the target's life. They will try to form friendships with targets. They will try to form relationships with targets. That girlfriend, that boyfriend, and possibly the husband and wife said, I wonder if this bitch or that bastard did Bob with it. <laughs> Best quit wondering. You got to wonder. They will get close to people that are affiliated with targets years before. The target ever realizes they are targets. They, they will try to get the target's life. If they can get into your life, but have a best friend, the new significant other might just be a member of the group. The same goes for siblings and the people that enter their lives. Isolation. I'm just about done. 
for the harassment to be successful. It's important. It, it's important to be able to isolate the target from friends, family members, co-workers, even spouses, if they're not already involved in the harassment. <laughs> to accomplish this isolation, many methods are used, included, but are not limited to, slander, lies, fake files, sabotage, anything that will get the target into a situation where they have no support system. This is important for them to succeed. Profiling. Targets will be observed and profiled long before they ever become aware that they are targeted by this sort of harassment. Profiles will be created on targets by following them, following people close to them, breaking into their homes and going through their stuff, listening to their calls, hacking to their computers, gathering information from friends and family, seeing where they like to shop and eat, what are their weaknesses, what things do they like like and dislike, what are their weaknesses, what the, uh, are, what can you bribe them with? What can you blackmail them with? How can you bully them? How can you be best be controlled? This will all be put together in a profile to target and then get them into situations of their determinant. Random encounters. This will, this will be people on the street who you randomly, unexpectedly run into. It looks completely natural. It seems to be ran, like a random encounter. This They might ask for a phone number after engaging you in a conversation. Ask you out. Ask you where you're going. Anything from small talk to lengthier conversations. All with the purpose of finding out something about you or even just getting you to do something. It's all about control. Ruined relationships. I think that's rare. I'm being sarcastic. When the targets are in a relationship, the members of the organ, organ, organized gang stalking group will try to ruin that relationship. This could be friendships, family, or significant others. If it's a romantic relationship, they will find out what your significant other likes and tries to get them to cheat or leave you. If it's a friendship, they will tell lies to come between you. The same goes for family. This is done so the targets will have no means of support. Once they do realize that something is going wrong in their lives, when this mobbing continues out in the community. It's called organized stalking. Organized stalking is mobbing that takes place out in the public. Deception using lies about the target appear to be the most common method used to get citizens to participate. Specifically, smear campaigns using bogus investigations. Furthermore, it's likely to take advantage of existing federally sponsored mechanisms such as, as community crime watch or community policing organization, senior citizens organizations, and religious groups and use them as unsuspecting instruments in their retaliation campaigns. Many people across the country have reported being harassed by these community groups. Some of these people they're using think they're doing a community service. They're very well funded and organized service cult that is apparently condoned or even run by the state. The jury's in on that. It is. The perpetrators of organized gang stalking are serious criminals who do great damage. And the acts done are very serious crimes by any measure. Organized gang stalking is a highly criminal campaign, one directed at a target individual and one that aims to destroy an innocent person's life through covert harassment, malicious slander, and carefully crafted and executed psychological assault not limited to missing persons in human and sex trafficking. Organized gang stalking deprives the targeted individual of their basic constitutional rights and destroys their freedom, setting a stage for the destruction of a person socially, mentally, and physically through a ceaseless assault that pervades all areas of a person's life. Following the target everywhere they go, gathering information about the target, where they shop, work, play, who their friends and family are, getting close to the target, moving into the community or apartment where they live across the street, follow the target, mobbing or crowding in public restaurants or store, having directed conversations about a target, standing close to the target, engaging in the target trivial conversations, 
and intentionally coughing at the target, repeatedly clearing throat, using gestures around, intentionally staring, glaring, pointing, or whispering at the target, jangling keys, jangling chains, getting a target sensitized to sounds, colors, patterns, actions. For example, red, white, yellow stripes, and we went through that. I tell you what, folks. Uh, I'm going to end it. My tirade, <laughs> as it seems to, to many, about systematic, organized criminal stalking. Now, I know there's a lot of things that are involved in this that I have not mentioned, okay? I made that clear when I started. There's not enough time in a day for me to, uh, to, to go through every aspect that these people use. I can confirm to you this is a federal funded and sanctioned program. President Trump referred to it as the deep state. Locally, the go-to shot caller point person for this program is your sheriff, police chief, EMA director, etc. That's it. They have a vast, vast network of criminals in their, under their wings. In Union County, Mississippi, and in North Mississippi, and this country is no exception to the rule. No exception to the rule. The reports you see and the things you hear in the press as it concerns horrible and deplorable things and situations, questioning, nine times out of ten, you're not getting the real story. Many fear the real story will never be known. It's my goal and my mission to make sure that story is known and the perpetrators behind it are known and that they're held accountable. And that they're held accountable. For those that have been gaslighted and told you're crazy and insane, etc., etc., don't go to other people for validation. The only validation that will ever matter is whether or not you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's who God says you are that matters. It's who God identifies you that matters. How the world identifies you and what they call you and what they have said has no merit with God. You can best believe as a child of God he sees and hears and knows all of this. Lean on him. He is our only protection. He is the only answer. He is the only answer. I stand and I will continue to fight with God absolutely surrounding me as I fight these battles and continue to expose this corruption. Until next time, I encourage you to share my channel, to like, to like my page, and let me hear from you. Until next time, God bless you.